Hello, this is Edith Niemeyer, and I am the author of the book, The Mystery of Adam. I have been doing some studies on Messiah, but I want to go back and add some uh, things to my uh, studies uh, or my review of my book, The Mystery of Adam. And I didn't put this in my book, but um, I probably should have, but I didn't know it. So here we go. This is on um, 1 Corinthians 14, 34 and 35. And I was doing a study on, of course, the church and how the church is supposed to function. So in other words, when the church gets together, um, the believers get together, uh, how are they supposed to con conduct um, their their assembly and so it's very easy you go to first corinthians 14 and i think it starts with 26 or 29 and, and i will go there today but when i read the whole thing i came across first corinthians 14 34 and 35 where paul supposedly was um saying and actually corinthians says that that women should be silent in church. Okay, uh, let me read that part real fast. Uh, it says, women should remain silent in the church. They are not allowed to speak, but must be in submission. As the law says, if they want to inquire about something, they should ask their own husbands at home. For it is disgraceful for a woman to speak in the church. Okay. So I came across that and I thought, that is odd. Now, how does somebody interpret this? Because this does not even fit in with the previous verses. And so I looked up commentary to 1 Corinthians 14, 34 and 35, and I came across an article. Uh, and it is found at the Fuller Theological Seminary, go under Women Ministry. And then there's an article on that by a David Scholars. Okay, a David by David Scholars. And um, read it. It's very, very good. Okay, now for the first time I'm realizing that something was not right, okay? David wrote, David Scholars wrote, that these verses, these two verses, you, sometimes in, in old uh, manuscripts are at the end of the chapter, rather in the middle or where they are now. And for me, that makes even more sense that they should be at the end. How even, however, even at the end, of the chapter they do not make sense at all because they contradict what paul wrote prior to these two verses it's like he writes prior to the and i'm going to read it in a little bit prior to these verses that it's okay for brothers and sisters to speak and pray and yeah you know, exercise their gifts um, in the church assembly. And then all of a sudden, and that's starting at 26. And then all of a sudden in 34, he says women should remain silent. And it absolutely interrupts the whole flow, you know, of the letter. Now, this is a letter by Paul, right? And when you write a letter, you don't have chapters, you don't have verses. So the, the letter, whatever you write, kind of flows. It, it, they, it seems to be, you know, people stay on the kind of the same topic. They don't contradict themselves either. And that's what I see Paul is doing right there. And so this David uh, scholars uh, also commented that most or that some scholars believe that these two verses were added later which makes absolute, absolute sense. Now, why in the world are no pastors preaching on that subject? 
why are no pastors um, being, uh, you know, why are they not being taught this in seminary? I don't understand. Now, I know I'm sure Fuller um, would teach this, but then again, would they get it in their regular, you know, whatever their uh, agenda is? Okay, I don't know. But I don't hear this. People don't preach this. I only hear these two verses pulled out of context and putting, pointing the fingers at women saying, oh, you can't speak in the church. Um, however, nobody is telling us that these two verses most likely were not even there in the beginning, that Paul never even did write these. So let's look at Paul's um, uh, letter. Actually, I'm only going to look at chapter uh, 14 in 1 Corinthians. And I'm starting with 26, okay, because that's why I started, because it says that that's where the order of um, the assembly is um, described. Now, when you see that, you can also uh, see that most of our churches are not even going by these instructions that Paul gave. Uh, gave. However, yeah, when we come to these two verses uh, that where it says women should be silent, oh, we are just uh, totally, totally abiding by these, these two verses. But the rest, we just absolutely ignore. Okay, so let's read these verses first. Um, 26 says, what then shall we say, brothers and sisters? Okay, now this is the NIV. And the NIV is, I guess, uh, is a pretty good translation. Probably older translations may say brothers only and not sisters. Like the King James, I haven't looked it up. But the new, newer versions, they address both the brothers and the sisters. Because Paul wrote the letter to the brothers and the sisters. He didn't write it to just the brothers, okay? And we see in the previous uh, verses, like 12 and 13, that God, um, not God, but Paul, um, Paul writes to the brothers and says to them that they are all equal in the body, okay? All equal in the body. Everybody gets, uh, you know, a gift from the Holy Spirit. Nobody can decide who's going to get what a gift. The Holy Spirit gives, give, gives all the gifts, okay? And he gives them to the brothers and sisters. So now we get to 26, and he says, when, What then shall we say, brothers and sisters? When you come together, each of you has a hymn. Okay, who has a hymn? Each one of you, which is brothers and sisters. So a hymn, is somebody speaking when they have a hymn? Absolutely. Or a word of instruction. Instruction is teaching, okay? Instruction is teaching. So each one of you have a word of instruction. What does that mean? Brothers and sisters have an instruction, okay? Brothers or sisters. A revelation, a tongue, or an interpretation. That all um, refers to both of them. Everything must be done so that the church may be built up. If anyone speaks in a tongue, two or uh, two, or at the most three should speak, one at a time, and someone must interpret. If there is no interpreter, the speaker should be quiet in the church and speak to himself and God. Now, who's supposed to be quiet? The brothers and sisters, right? Not just the women, okay? No, no, no. Brothers and sisters, you speak in tongues and nobody can interpret. You're supposed to be quiet. Two or three prophets should speak, okay? So what does that mean? If a woman has a prophecy, can she speak? Well, according to Paul here, two or three prophets should speak. She's a prophet or prophetess. She can speak. And the others should weigh carefully what is said. Okay? Here, me, this means that the prophet has no authority over the body, has no authority over the other members of um, the church. Okay? Because the other members should weigh carefully what is said. And if a revelation comes to someone who is sitting down, the first speaker should stop. Okay? No authority. This prophet can't say, well, I am speaking now and you guys shut up. You know, it's my turn. No, that's not what Paul says. Now, this applies to what? Brothers and sisters. 
for you can all prophesy in turn so that everyone everyone may be instructed and encouraged do you hear that everyone okay everyone that includes women okay the spirit of prophets are subject to the control of prophets in other words you have control over the message you're getting this is not the message you're getting is not out of hand or you not becoming out of hand because of the message you are always in control so god is not a god of disorder but of peace as in all the congregations of the lord's people okay so now we're at the end of 33 okay now he contradicts exactly what he just said in how many verses uh 29 31 through 33 that's four verses four words he just said and and i didn't even read the other chapters that women can speak in church they can teach in church now he says women should remain silent in church does not make sense it absolutely contradicts the first verses four verses not only that it interrupts now the flow now let's skip 34 to 35 and go to 36 or did the word of god originate with you or are you the only people it has reached if anyone thinks they are a prophet or otherwise gifted by the spirit let them acknowledge that what i'm writing to you is the lord's command but if anyone ignores this they will themselves be ignored therefore but my brothers and sisters be eager to prophesy who is he instructing to be eager to prophesy of course the sisters right and do not forbid speaking in tongues but everything should be done in a fitting and orderly way wow 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 i'm just saying wow i am stunned ah uh, or actually let's say i was stunned when i read this in context okay i've never seen it in context like this and maybe the holy spirit is for the first time opening my eyes i don't know what it is or because i read this article by this um david color that i'm becoming more aware of what's going on here okay but not only contradict the the, the verse uh, 34 and 35 contradict the previous verse but it interrupts the flow the flow should be the spirits of prophets are subject to the control of prophets for god is not a god of disorder but of peace as in all the congregation of the lord's people or did the word of god originate with you or are you the only people it has reached if anyone thinks they are a prophet or otherwise gifted by the spirit let them acknowledge that what i'm writing to you is the lord's command but if anyone ignores this they will themselves be ignored now that is the flow that is the flow and again some transcript uh, older manuscripts have those two verses at the end now why in the world number one did anybody add these verses and that's what i am assuming okay i can't prove it but if i'm looking at the flow of things these two don't fit in okay if i do an english or whatever even if i read it in the greek it doesn't fit in it doesn't fit in with the flow of thinking okay not necessarily the language but the flow of thinking so why would anybody put add these verses in the first place and then move them up move them up um 33 be, be, uh, uh, into 34. well i have a feeling that um there were forces at work that were uh, trying to silence women okay whoever added these added them in the right place for them to make people believe that actually this was in paul's letter and the reason why i say this because here they're using uh, god uh, actually paul instructed them and said this is the instruction of god for all um, churches okay and it, it, he said 
uh, the word originated from God. Okay, he said it was God's spirit that revealed it to him. Okay, now. And then he says, but if anyone ignores this, they will themselves be ignored. So, and so therefore, if people do not acknowledge these words, oh, well, they are being put on a heavy guilt trip uh, with the next person. Okay, a heavy guilt trip. So in a sense, we are almost forced to accept that women should be silent because it's so much stronger than the previous um, verses that I read starting in 26, okay? Again, because older texts even say brethren, and they don't say sisters, brothers and sisters. So this seems to look like, oh, this is only for the brothers, okay? And now we're going to the women in 34, and women should be silent, because that does not apply to women, the top part. But that's not the way it is. Paul says clearly in chapter 12 that men and women are part of the church and that there's no distinction between the body parts. Okay, He talks about the body parts in chapter 12. And there's no dis distinction. The eye is not over the ear. And, you know, you can't replace a, an eye with an ear. And... Uh, you know, he clearly says that we are all equal in the body. And then all of a sudden, in, in these two verses, he just totally, totally silences women. Okay? And I cannot see, well, if you look at those verses, they're kind of strange anyway. Okay? They're very strange. Because it says, women should remain silent in church. They are not allowed to speak, but must be in submission. As the law says. And then you think, now what law is Paul talking about? As the law says? Hmm. Is he talking about the law of Moses? No, the law of Moses doesn't say that. Uh, is he talking about Talmud? Um, I don't know. I don't know Talmud because we don't believe that's the word of God. So we're not studying Talmud. Uh, is he talking about the law as in... Uh, the local law or the government law, okay? The government law say, does the government law say anything that women cannot speak um, in the churches or in public? I don't know. I don't know that much information. Was it um, unlawful for people to speak in public or women to speak in public during Roman time under the Roman uh, government? That one I don't know, okay? But I doubt it. I doubt it very much because he says earlier that they can't speak and prophesy. So why in the world then would he come and say, according to the law, they can't? Hmm, that's strange. And then in 35, he says, boy, it is disgraceful for a woman to speak in the church. Uh, okay, what exactly does he get that from? that it is disgraceful for a woman to speak in the church. Again, he just said earlier that they can prophesy and that's speaking. He just said that they can instruct and that's teaching. And he said women can do that. So why in the world would he turn around and say it's in the law, in some kind of law, who knows what kind of law it is, and that it is disgraceful? That is just, even those two verses make absolutely no sense whatsoever. And so therefore, they may have been at the end of the chapter, but I also believe they shouldn't even be at the end. I believe they were added um, at one point. And I think they were probably added um, before the, the Bible was put together. And we know the Bible was put together uh, in 300 and something. Um, so that that was a long time, in, you know, in which they could have made changes to the manuscript. And he's thinking, okay, who wants to make changes to, you know, manuscript? Well, guess what? Um, I guess it happens. I have shown very clearly that people, translators have translated words incorrectly. Um, and nobody seems to care too much about it. Um, 
And we have seen that so many mistranslations, you know, are out there. Like, for instance, people who want to just pull these verses out of context and just preach on it. And that happens. Nobody cares about the context just because they want to make a point. So again, who has an interest in changing these things? Well, I would think somebody who is trying to silence women. Now, I say that if somebody is trying to silence women, they will silence 50% of the congregation. Okay, 50% will be uh, deemed immobile. Okay, in other words, they're not just even disabled. They are they're just laid flat. In other words, they're silenced. Okay, and then we have 50% left, and these 50% are following lies. So what do we have left? Nothing. So how effective is our church when 50% are silenced? And I'm not even saying 50%. I would even think that it is 80% and even more. Okay? Because when we look at how we should conduct church, we see clearly that we are in the wrong. Okay? If we only have a few people up there conducting church, you know, in my church, I went to, to church this morning. There were really three people who were in charge of the service. Preacher, the one that reads all the other stuff, the prayers and all that. Uh, and then the person who does the, uh, the music ministry. Okay, That person will tell what kind of songs we're going to sing. Then the preacher tells us what, what kind of prophecy he has, what kind of teaching he has. So he combines all the gifts in one. Um, and then the other guy, he's just kind of there to serve and, and to, you know, to the, to the rest. Sometimes, sometimes, you know, they pray. Um, so, okay, now you tell me if that is really the right conduct or the right order we should have in the church. No, it isn't. It isn't, okay? It's not according to what Paul instructed. And that is the sad part about it, okay? That, yeah, we can pull out two verses and just hammer it, even though these two words most likely were not in Paul's letters, okay? Mostly not, okay? And so we hammer these two verses, but the rest we absolutely ignore. I mean, absolutely ignore. Okay, and then we're saying we're doing things right. Or we're doing things according to God's will. Well, Paul is saying, but if anyone ignores this, they will themselves be ignored. And he's not just talking about the two verses. He's talking about the whole instructions about how the church should run. So, yeah. And how many churches do we have that uh, are run in the same order that Paul preached? Hmm. I don't know, probably not very many. I know of one church uh, type called the organic church that are, is doing it um, according to Paul, but most churches are not, are not even following uh, Paul's instructions. But yeah, okay, 30 and 4, we definitely need a hammer that women should be silent in church. Okay, and of course we're not hammering that on just women, but everybody else. Think about it. Three people are are saying something, um, and and the rest are quiet. So we have way over probably ninety percent people quiet in the church. That is not what God's instruction. So, yeah, I had to add this, and I, you know, I wish I would have seen it earlier, but it is kind of amazing that I just came across that and I just read it and I'm thinking that makes total sense. I can see that. I can see that very, very clearly. So anyways, that is it. And um, I hope you enjoyed this revelation and I'm encouraging you to continue to read it for yourself and to study and see for yourself if what I said is correct. I will talk to you later.